be made. Hearing none, then we would ask for a roll call on the amended minutes from the April 6th meeting. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Brian? Yes. Councilman Kanoya? Yes. Councilman Kiffis? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Councilman Susie? Yes. Councilman Ward? Yes. President Gender? Yes. And the minutes are approved 7 to 0, as amended. Consent agenda. Motion to approve. Motion made by Councilman Kithis. Second, Kanoyer. Seconded by Councilman Kanoyer. Are there any items to be taken up separately? Hearing none, roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Brian? Yes. Councilman Kanoyer? Yes. Councilman Kithis? Yes. Councilman Susie? Councilwoman yes. Sierra? <laughs> yes. Councilman Susie? Yes. Councilman Ford? Yes. President Jagger? Yes, and the consent agenda is approved as presented, 7 to 0. Ordinance is passed for the first time, April 6th. 2003, authorizing the fire chief of the city of Winsocket to purchase a 2020 Ford F-550 emergency medical services rescue vehicle. Motion to approve, Motion Sierra. To approve. Motion Second. made by Councilwoman Sierra, seconded by Councilman Knoyer, I believe. Uh, on the... Um, Second passage, any uh, comments? <laughs> Hearing none, and roll call Madam Clerk for second passage. Councilman Brian? Yes. Councilman Kanoya? Yes. Councilman Kiffis? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Councilman Susie? Yes. Councilman Ward? Finally, yes. President Gender? Yes, and after months of trying, 20 O's. Zero three is approved. Second passage, seven to zero. 2005, amending the Code of Ordinances, City of Winsocket, Rhode Island, entitled Alcoholic Beverages, Chapter 3, Section 3.5C. Motion to approve. Motion made by Councilman Kanoya, seconded by Councilman Brian. Comments? Council President. Councilman Kithis. Uh, just as I said last time, I will not be supporting this. I think this uh, ordinance is very anti business. Um, and is potentially harmful to uh, small restaurant entertainment industry businesses in the time of a crisis where we really don't want to be doing that. So uh, I strongly oppose this. Okay, any other comments? Hearing none, roll call Madam Clerk. Councilman Breen? Yes. Councilman Kanoya? Yes. Councilman Kiffis? No. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Councilman Susie? Yes. Councilman Ward? Yes. President Gender? Yes. And 2005 is approved 6 to 1. 2011 granted a petition for a new joint poll for National Grid and Verizon on Hamlet Avenue. Motion to approve. Sierra? Second, Ward. Motion made by Councilwoman Sierra, seconded by Councilman Ward. Comments? <laughs> Hearing none, roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Brian? Yes. Councilman Kanoya? Yes. Councilman Kiffis? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Councilman Susie? Yes. Councilman Ward? Yes. President Gender? Yes. And 2011 is approved 7 to 0, second passage. New ordinances. 2014 establishing regulations for map G4 lot 26-1 known as Booth Pond Conservation Area. Motion to approve. Kanoya. Motion made by Councilman Kanoya. Second. Yeah. Seconded by Councilman Susi. Comments? Well, by way of a, excuse me, a brief explanation, this is simply to um, set up some uh, leisure rules for the Booth Pond area, and it'll be in conjunction with uh, the town of North Smithfield. Are uh, there any other comments? Uh, um, Cal Council President. Councilman Ward. I notice in here that uh, one of the items listed is no motorized vehicles, and another interested it mentioned is no bicycles. Um, motorized vehicles, I think, I don't know how that would be enforced, and I, I'd be interested. Not critical to my approval of this because I think it's appropriate, but I believe that it's fairly common that motorized vehicles go traveling through those woods fairly regularly. Um, so whoever's responsible to take care of that should be, I hope, prepared to follow through with that. As far as bicycles, I've driven a bicycle through there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why 
it would be prohibited. Um, it doesn't seem unsafe, but I'll go along with it because it's uh, it may be just that it's uh, a little dangerous for some people, or if they should get hurt, it would be very difficult to get them out of there. So I'm supporting it. I just wonder about those two items. Okay. This is first passage, so we may be able to get an answer before the next passage. Any other comments? Hearing none, roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Brand? Yes. Councilman Kanoya? Yes. Councilwoman yes. Sierra? Yes. Councilman Susie? Yes. Councilman Ward? Yes. President Jandron? Yes, and 2014 is approved. Seven to zero, first passage. 2015 amending the code of ordinance to city of Winsock, Rhode Island to temporarily exempt individuals experiencing homelessness from certain laws. Motion to approve. Motion made by Councilman Kithis. I'll second for discussion. Second by Councilman Susi. Comments? Council President. Councilman Kithis. So in talking to um, some members of the public, I'd like to make um, an amendment to this, to amend, well, an amendment that consists of two different changes to each paragraph that are identical. Um, so in all, so you'll see all three paragraphs are mostly identical. So in each, um, where it says this section shall not be enforced by the Wasaka Police Department against an individual who professes to be experiencing homelessness or whom that reasonably appears to be the case. Um, after that comma, add in, or before the comma, excuse me, add in space through fines or arrest. Um, and then continue on with the sentence in each of those. Uh, and also um, to all three, uh, at, um, excuse me, at the, after it says in all cases where the violation is of a nature that is nonviolent against the person's safety of another individual, um, right after individual, comma, and does not con constitute destruction of personal property or invasion of personal privacy of any other individual. And both of those changes would be made to each of the three paragraphs in the same place. Okay. So that's a, uh, a motion for an amendment? I'll second. Seconded by Councilman Susi. Comments on the amendment? Uh, Council President. Uh, if I may, through, through the president, may I ask Councilman Kithis to read back that second amendment? Absolutely. I didn't get all the words. Yeah, totally. Um, so that would be, you know, do you know where it is? Sorry, yes. I'm like talking between screens. Okay. So, uh, and does not constitute destruction of personal property or invasion of personal privacy of any other individual. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments on the amendment. Hearing none, roll call on the amendment. Madam Clerk. Councilman Brian? Yes. Councilman Kanoya? Yes. Councilman Kiffis? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Councilman Susie? Yes. Councilman Ward? Yes. President Janja? Yes. And the uh, 20. 015 is before us as amended. On the main motion as amended, comments? Council President? Councilman Green. Council President, I uh, want to say that while the um, the amendment does make uh, a bad piece of legislation stink just a little bit less, I have to tell you that I am 100% in opposition of this particular piece of legislation. If you go and, and, you know, my profession is as a criminal defense attorney, and to say that as a criminal defense attorney, I'm actually against legislation that would lessen the prosecution of individuals is pretty surprising even to me. However, if you look under the, the uh, code of ordinances, section 14.1, while Councilman Kiss's legislation takes away the personal property uh, and the and the um, and the privacy issues it's very difficult uh, to it's very difficult to bifurcate some of that because you have 
141p pro, when some when an individual prowl, prowls or wanders upon the private property of another, peeks into the door or window of any inhabited building or in structure located thereon without visible or lawful business. So basically, what we're doing is we're taking pieces of section. 14.1 disorderly conduct and indecency yes, and we're throwing them out for the purposes of this crisis yes. but there are other parts in here too under e if the individual is in a public place under the influence of an intoxicating liquor or drug in such condition as is to be unable to exercise care for his own safety or the safety of others uh I, section o wantonly makes a false alarm with reference to the request of firefighting apparatus or cries fire in any public place for the sole purpose of causing turmoil. S. Frequents any public place with the intent to obtain money from persons by illegal and fraudulent schemes, tricks, artifices, or devices. Basically what this is saying is if I, John Brian, am in the middle of Winter Street stopping traffic and i'm intoxicated and i have lost all my faculties then i can be arrested and fined because i live in a house up the street on woodland road but if the same the same offense occurs by someone who says well i'm homeless then we're not going to prosecute them because they professed that they're homeless uh, you know the old saying goes uh, the road to hell was paved with good intention. And that's what this does. This base, if you look, you could, it says drunkenness, 14.2. Any person who shall be found intoxicated under such circumstances as to amount to a violation of decency shall for each offense be punished as provided in the section. So I can be punished. But if you're homeless, you can't be. Loitering police order to disperse. It shall be unlawful for any person to loiter, loaf, wander, stand, or remain idle, either along or in consort with others in a public place, in such a manner to obstruction of any public street, public highway, public sidewalk, or any other public place or building by hindering or impeding to tent or tend to hinder or impede the free and uninterrupted passage of vehicles, traffic, or pedestrians. So at the conclusion of this meeting, if I go stand in front of the emergency port on Cass Avenue and don't allow emergency vehicles into Landmark Medical Center from Cass Avenue, I can get arrested under 14.3. But if somebody says, well, I'm homeless, well, okay, get along, little doggy. Just move, keep going, and, and, and we're not going to prosecute you. That is absolutely ludicrous. I am not going to in any way, shape, or form going to support legislation that basically says come to Winsocket and break the laws if you're homeless because if you are guess what we're not going to prosecute you and by the way all you got to do is say I'm homeless you have to profess to be homeless it may or may not be true but if you profess to be homeless then you are somehow immune from the code of ordinances of the city of Winsocket and I as a member of the Rhode Island bar cannot stand for that kind of, it's ridiculous. And I, and I, and I, I, I just, I'm sorry that this got a second because it shouldn't even be under consideration. So with that council president, I urge my colleagues do not, not support this piece of legislation. Thank you. Council president. Thank you. Council, council president. Vice president Brian. Any other comments? Council president. Council president. Councilman Kenoyer. Council president. I yeah. said, I asked, for the floor first. first. You've already spoken for, for the first I time. I made an amendment. I wasn't. I didn't make comments. Okay, Councilman Kithis, go ahead. Okay, so I, I should have. I should probably have it. You know, introduced the intention of this. That's um, why I thought you were already speaking. So when you spoke once, I put you down as having already spoken because you spoke first, right out of the gate. And I, I understand you made an a, a, an amendment. Um, so go ahead. Okay. Thank you. So, right now we are in a global pandemic that uh, any place where there are people um, that are packed in, that are in like a dense 
um, any sort of dense like location with a lot of people. It is an incredible risk for the spread of this virus that um, has horrible symptoms when it does become symptomatic and has a relatively very high death rate. So right now, one of the most vulnerable populations in the city, in anywhere, are people who don't have anywhere to, an, an actual roof over their heads to quarantine, to socially distance and self-isolate under. And, um, and also if they do get sick, don't have, not only don't typically have access to medical care, but also don't have a place to, at the very least, try to recover um, separated from other people. And so um, the intention with this ordinance is to make it so that, and I did my best with the language, but I would absolutely invite Councilman Green or anybody else to make additional um, um, like alterations like I did with that amendment in order to remove possible pitfalls, like like some of which was just described by Councilman Brian, though I disagree with some of it. Um, because I think that it's imperative right now that we ensure that we're not adding to the prison population, that we're not, um, you know, like, like we're, we're in an exceptional moment right now where we can't be adding to the prison population for anything that is not absolutely necessary to take somebody out of a situation or off the street or, you know, away from their home. Like, we, we have to be absolutely, um, like, it, it's it's an incredibly exceptional situation right now. Like, it may be true what Councilman Brian said just now. In normal circumstances, that may be true. However, some of these laws do get misconstrued to or, it, or enforced to their fullest extent in order to um, simply illegalize the existence of a homeless person in a public space or teetering on public private property. Um, and that's a problem in general, but right now it's absolutely imperative that we not be putting more people in jail and that we not be um, specifically punishing, in the cases that I just mentioned, the existence of people who do not have a place to self-quarantine, self-isolate, socially distance to ensure that they reduce the risk of getting the virus themselves or if they have it and are asymptomatic or are symptomatic reduce the possibility of spreading it to other people. People, people experiencing homelessness are in one of the most um, economically dire situations of, of anybody. And to my knowledge, nobody on this council has ever been homeless. And so it's very difficult to actually understand what that, what that encompasses on the other side. But we have to try to, one, approach this with empathy and understand that whatever the situation that resulted in it, being homeless may have to do with um, some, some sort of substance use or alcohol use or whatever whatever the situation may be. And if they are filing an ordinance, which maybe in, an, in normal circumstances could be, would be grounds for punishment, if they're violating it right now, we should, like, there should be a very high bar to ever putting somebody in jail right now during this pandemic. Rikers Island is, is a great example of, of of what we don't want to start happening here. So, with that, Council President. Um, um, yeah. Council President. Councilman Kanoya. Yeah. So, <clears throat> similar to Councilman Breen, I, I will not be supporting this. And, um, you know, the second to last whereas, and the very last whereas, purports this ordinance that um, the city, <clears throat> says the city of Wasaka wishes not to exasperate this increased risk of community spread by punishing certain nonviolent offenses. And then it says that chapter 14, sections one, two, and three have been identified to qualify as nonviolent offenses. Um, the problem with that is if you actually read the ordinance that wants, <clears throat> that the councilman wants to exempt, uh, wants to be exempt during this pandemic, let me read it to you. Um, disorderly conduct prohibited, that's in section 14.1. The first item is A, commits an act in a violent and tumultuous manner toward another whereby that other is placed in fear of safety of his life or limb. It's an act of violence. B, commits an act in a violent tumultuous manner toward another whereby the property of any person is placed in danger. C, provokes or engages in any fight, brawl, or riotous conduct <clears throat> so as to endanger the life, limb, health, 
and property of another. D, interferes with another's pursuit of a lawful occupation by acts of violence. It goes on and on and on and on, all about violent acts. Yet we're purporting that this is somehow not about violence, and we're going to exempt it. I mean, it's just, it makes no sense. So um, for those reasons, obviously, I will not support this. And I will I'll say further that this pandemic does not discriminate. It doesn't matter if you're homeless or you have 10 homes. It doesn't matter if you're old or young, rich or poor. Okay? Boris Johnson, the prime minister of Britain, has the virus. Tom Hanks and his wife had the virus. Chris Cuomo and his wife have the virus. The CFO of Jeffrey's Financial Group died from the virus. It doesn't discriminate. Okay? The, the, the most deaths in this, the state of Rhode Island, if you've read the paper uh, recently, 75% of, death, of deaths are at nursing homes. Emphasize the word homes, not homeless. So to start to pick and choose like this is... Well, I know where I know where this comes from, but I'm not going to support it. As Councilman Green indicated very clearly, we're not going to have two classes of people here. If you have a home, you get arrested for violent acts. If you don't have a home, you have a free pass. Absolutely not. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, Mr. President? Who is that? Uh, Susie. Councilman Susie. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say that you know I think the intention. Was 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 what was 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 good. Uh, I think you know the to think that we're all been told to shelter in place in this world, right? And I think thinking about the homeless that are maybe have a place that's not legitimate, but it is their place. I think my my feel was that if that was going to be something we can back down on uh, and uh, and give these these folks a break. Obviously, there's there's uh, some problems with this, and especially the enforcement of it would be very difficult. And I just want to say the Cosman brain of why did I second it? Because it's not. Interesting. What does that do for anybody? It doesn't help the, the, the citizenry know what we're thinking about. So yeah, I'm happy to we talked about it. Whether I, I probably won't even vote for this because I think it would be too difficult uh, to 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 in, to enforce. But the intent I think was very good. I think there's nothing wrong with that intent to try to protect our most vulnerable uh, people out there. Uh, it's a discussion worth happening, especially in our city where we have that issue. I I sat on the homeless shelter board for uh, for a number of years and. Uh, you know, you're, you're right. None of us have been homeless, but I've certainly experienced what, what it can be like through these people. Uh, so I had a, you know, a feeling for this that I, that I, that I still, uh, you know, I commend uh, Councilman to this for at least bringing it up. And I'm glad we talked about it and now we can vote on it. Any other comments? Uh, anyone else for the first time? Council President. Councilman Ward. I'll go back to you, Councilman Kithis. Uh, Council President, I'm not going to be supporting this uh, for several reasons. One is I do not believe we can pull exceptions out for homelessness, though it's admirable in its desire. I don't believe they constitute a protected class under the law and therefore cannot have exceptions separating them from the rest of society in the implement or the enforcement of the laws that we pass. I may be wrong, but I don't think I am. Um, secondly, Within that section, I'm dealing strictly with section one at the moment. The first one, there are in, in the matter related to disorderly conduct um, related to section one, there are 22 itemized violations listed and of that 13 explicitly reference violence, so they wouldn't apply here. The 14th is the one that Councilman Kithis added to the exception rule having to do with the destruction of or property damage to others' personal property. That would leave eight items that we would be protecting the homeless from uh, any kind of arrest, fine, or um, incarceration, even locally. Two of those relate to prostitution. I don't know that they necessarily need an exception to allow them to participate in and solicit for prostitution purposes, um, or that that would in any way help them during this critical time. Uh, another would mean that police could no longer assist. Well, they could actually assist and provide intervention for a person under the influence of alcohol, as Councilman Green referred to, in such condition as to be unable to exercise care for their own safety or the safety of others. But I, I suspect if we were to have an interview with the police chief and their senior staff, I would think that it is fairly routine for them to provide such assistance. And if they're so severely intoxicated or on drugs, that they're brought to the hospital, not to the city jail. Um, another 
is pulling or calling in a false alarm to the fire department. I don't think we want to grant them that privilege. Another is to allow for what was more described in greater detail, but would be essentially peeping toms. I don't think they need a, that privilege assigned to them. Another is obtaining money under false pretenses. And then two items have to do with manners that cause or provoke a disturbance or interfere with speakers at a public assembly to cause turmoil or disrupt disturbance. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't have a recollection of, of that being a problem so much in the city. And if it is, I'm not sure that they're thrown in jail for it. Um, and so, but even so, I don't think the homeless as a class would have the privilege to engage in that. Other than that, I'm not sure what's in this exception. That's the best having, to, having to do with homelessness as something that would you would want to allow for these things to occur. Section two um, refers to drunkenness and actually um, speaks very little other than to say would be a violation of decency and shall be punished as provided in the sections one through eight. Um, however, the cross-reference here is possession. There's a cross-reference to uh, section 3-3, which has to do with the uh, possession of an open al alcoholic beverage container in the public is restricted. I'm not sure that you would want to exempt anybody from that. And the, um, the third one is simple loitering. Um, and um, I think the only time anyone ever gets into trouble with loitering is when in the cases that are in, in the ordinance, hindering or impeding the free and uninterrupted passage of vehicles, traffic or pedestrians, or any act or thing which is an obstruction or interference to the free and uninterrupted use of the property. Um, and it says any person who fails or refuses to obey orders by the police to disperse are in violation of the section. I don't think we should be promoting the concept of people being entitled because they are in a separate group to fail to, to not respond appropriately to the orders of the police department in an appropriate situation. So I don't see anything in here that actually protects the homeless in this case, because none of which what's in here, I don't believe ends up with people being arrested and moved into a jail. And um, I did ask the public safety director this morning, whether or not um, we uh, issue citations or arrests for people that are violating the ordinances that are that are listed here and uh, his response to me basically has me said telling me has him telling me that the municipal municipal ordinances um, really the biggest one are citations for open containers and most of the rest of the work the police do when they end up arresting people have to do with violations of the state law and I'm certain that we have no authority to write an ordinance that would prohibit the police or restrict them in their um, make it, doing their duty um, as required under state law. So for all of those reasons, I will be not supporting this ordinance. Uh, this Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Ward. Any other comments for the first time? Council President, Director Gillette, if I could uh, expound on uh, Councilman Ward's uh, information. Go ahead, Director Gillette. So uh, just some uh, numbers here. Uh, in the last 16 months, uh, we had 2,075 arrests. Oh, another 95 of those arrests were for uh, municipal court custodial violations. Uh, we, we actually take some people in. Uh, 21 of those 95 were disorderly, 11 were refusing, 2 were obstruction, and our biggest number was uh, 61 uh, arrest by warrant, which is uh, failed to appear or failed to pay. So uh, that's our biggest number. Um, out of those 95 arrests, uh, 13 had no permanent address. Um, we use all discretion, especially in these times, as far as making any arrests um, for any violations. And uh, you know, our homeless population, uh, we I checked Harvest Community uh, and shelter is still open. Um, if we encounter a homeless person who, who, who needs something, uh, an arrest is one of our last things we, we, we try to find.
find some health firms through our community uh, human service uh, providers, uh, human service director. So um, I just I just want to put that information out there so uh, you can make a valid decision in this either way. So uh, that's what would happen. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Thank you, Director. Mr. President? Um, Council President, as a member of the Council, I feel like I should have priority. Well, one second. Uh, somebody else was saying something. I don't know who it was. Mr. President, it's me. It's John B. Simone. Yes, go ahead, John uh, Uh I, I just wanted to bring up the fact that, you know, a lot of these city code ordinances that we have, they coincide with state law. So, for instance, disorderly is 11451, uh, indecent exposure is 11452. So, there's really, you know, this seems to be a little bit feel good as well because the police still have to enforce the state laws. We're not exempting anyone from the state, but we don't have that power. So I just wanted to bring that up to the discussion so that everybody knows these state laws are in effect. Okay. So. Thank you, Solicitor. Councilman yep. Kittins. So I just, a couple of comments. First of all, to go back to what Councilman Kanoyer said, um, yes, this virus technically doesn't discriminate, but certainly the outcomes are worse for people who don't have access to a house or health care or financial means. And if you don't understand that, then you probably need to talk to more people in the world than just your narrow circle. Um, to Director Gillette, I just want to thank you for that information. I appreciate that. And I'm glad to hear that the police force is taking that discretion um, and has taken that discretion. Um, that said, I'm glad to hear that the police force is taking discretion and not necessarily putting people in jail for violating laws if they can afford Avoid it, which is exactly what I'm trying to do legislatively. So the rest of the council members that oppose this on the grounds that they don't believe exceptions should be made, when I propose the legislation, don't look great because it's already not being enforced if it can be avoided, which is good. I'm glad that that's happening. And it's just a little disingenuous to oppose this when I introduce it legislatively, but not have a comment because when it's already being, when it's already, enforcement is already being lax or discretion. Um, that said, I'm, I'm, I have no further comments. Okay. Any other comments? Councilman, uh, Council President. <laughs> Councilman Brian. I just want to make the comment at this point that I believe that Councilman Kithis's comments are out of order, both in terms of uh, Councilman Kanoya's opposition to this legislation my opposition to this legislation to somehow believe that look I've always been someone that calls balls and strikes pretty fairly if a good piece of legislation is good I vote for it if it's a dog I don't vote for it this is a dog and that's why I said earlier I don't even know why it got a second because there are some pieces of legislation quite frankly that I don't believe deserve a second or even deserve any type of consideration. This is one of those pieces of legislation that I don't believe is, is, you want to talk about disingenuous, I believe that this legislation is disingenuous on its face because there's no way that this is in any way lawful, equal protection under the law, constitutional, enforceable, it's, it's ridiculous. So quite frankly, to say that somehow that the councilman is the victim now is just... It, is specious in my opinion and i just at this point i mean I, I we should just move the question but i'm not making that motion council president okay any other comments council, council president, president for the first time councilwoman sierra i just have to weigh in here too because i i feel like Councilman kit this was was way out of line and in, in stating that they were disingenuous it's just a poor piece of legislation councilman kit this it's very hard to support something that you have absolutely no faith in and to suggest that we amend it we would have to rewrite the entire piece of legislation in order to make it fair for everybody that exists the homed people and the homeless people you don't get a free pass from, for beating somebody up or being a drunk in public because you don't have a home it's unacceptable behavior no matter who or what you are or where you live or where you do not live that councilman Brian is absolutely correct on its face this is just a very poor piece of legislation from a legal standpoint it isn't that it, we don't want to support it because, or, or I speak for myself, that I don't want to support it because it comes from you. Quite frankly, I'm looking for something really good to come from you so I can support it. 
quite the opposite. So unfortunately, this is not the piece of legislation that I can do that on. I, I look forward to something that I can support, but I will not be supporting this piece of legislation either. For all those reasons, all of my peers brought up some very good points. Thank you. Any other comments? Council President. Councilman Knoyer. Yep. Uh, through the chair, I'd just like to ask the sponsor, Mr. Kithers, did you speak to the police department or the public safety director prior to submitting this legislation? Uh, I did not. No, I Okay, I thank you. Uh, just yes or no. That's all I wanted to no. know. So listen, you know, a police department, they're not stormtroopers. Okay? They don't go in and start just arresting people so really nearly for the heck of it. Um, what Director Gillette said is he gave you statistics. He didn't say we don't enforce our laws. He didn't say we don't um, follow through. He simply said we try to help the homeless when we come across them but if they break the law they do what they have to do so don't put words in the, in, in the director's mouth okay any council, other comments council president councilman ward uh, i just want to go on record officially that um i have no interest in the setup that councilman kithis just laid out there where somehow we are acting in the way we're acting in opposition to his ordinance uh, because it was his. In fact, I, I analyzed it and spent quite a bit of time looking at it, and I communicated with the public safety director about that related to this and other items in tonight's agenda. And so for the record, before the social media broadsides come at me, um, accusing me of simply opposing a particular piece of legislation because of who it sponsored by that is absolutely not the case and in this case it has not been the case and will not be the case i evaluate uh legislation according to its merits i discuss it with other members and or people who have an interest in how it affects people in the city and then i make my decision and that's what i'm doing here this evening thank you thank you any other comments i would just like to close this out i i think that some very good points were made. Council Vice President Brian, um, you, you laid it out uh, from a legal standpoint um, why this is not only useless legislation, but bad le legislation. Um, but I wasn't going to say too much about it, uh, except for the fact that there is, seems to be a need to constantly point personal blame at everybody else because of bad legislation as submitted. And I'm just getting tired of this always turning into a personality battle. It's bad legislation. I was not and I am not going to support it. But I think Councilwoman Sierra said it best when she said, Councilman Kithis, I would like to support some legislation when you bring good legislation forward. And there's nothing more than that. It's bad legislation. And I'm certainly not voting against you. I'm voting against bad legislation. And to say that anybody is voting against bad legislation for anything other than the merits of that legislation is wrong. And I, I really think you crossed a, a low, low line with that. Madam Clerk, roll call. Councilman Brand? No. Councilman Kanoya? Of course not, no. Councilman Kiffis? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? No. Councilman Susie? No. Councilman Ward? No. President Gendron? No. In 2015 is defeated six to one. 2016, granting a petition for a new joint poll for National Grid and Verizon on Manila Avenue. Motion to approve, Sierra. Motion made by Councilwoman Sierra, seconded Second, by Second Ward. Councilman Ward. Comments? Hearing none, roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Brian? Yes. Councilman Kanoya? Yes. Councilman Kithis? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Councilman Susie? Yes. Councilman Ward? Yes. President Gender? Yes. And 2016 is approved. 7 to 0, first passage. 2017 ordinance issuing waiver of composting facility fee. Motion to approve. Motion made by Councilman Kithis. 
Second, Sierra. By Councilwoman Sierra and Council Vice President Brian, I believe. Yes. Comments? Uh, Council President. Council Vice President Brian. Council President, this uh, piece of legislation was introduced. It just kind of tweaks a piece of legislation that we passed at the last uh, meeting that we had two weeks ago. Um, the change, the most uh, salient change to the legislation is that the original piece of legislation waived the $25 fee, but also waived the need for the permitting, the, the permitting um, regime that was in place uh, due to the fact that uh, City Hall close to the public, etc., and, and um, public works is the one that issues the, um, the, the, the sticker for each season, uh, the permit and the sticker. So in speaking uh, with uh, Mr. DeBroyce, we were able to, um, he was able to let you know that the current policy about uh, mailing in the, um, the registration and then the sticker is mailed back to the, um, to the resident. So that's really the change. So the, the permit is required. Um, but it's done, going to be done by mail, uh, as Mr. DeBroyce uh, described. But the fee for the for uh, the county year of 2020 is waived, and that was because rather than going up to uh, June uh, 1st, if you had paid before the the uh, pandemic hit, you know, how do you separate that? So we just did it a blanket waiver for the season, uh, for the calendar year rather. Uh, but the permitting remains. So that's that's. That's the change. Thank you. Any other comments? I would just end by saying uh, I spoke with the town council president in Blackstone, who um, also agrees with the changes that Councilman Brian has offered with uh, in, in, with the work with council with uh, Mr. DeBroyce. So, thank you for that. Uh, and roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Brian. Yes. Councilman Kanoya. Yes. Councilman Kiffis. Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Councilman Susie? Yes. Councilman Ward? Yes. President Gender? Yes. 2017 is approved 7 to 0, first passage. New resolutions, Madam Clerk. 2043, authorizing the cancellation of certain taxes. Motion to approve. Motion made by Councilwoman Sierra, seconded by Councilman Ward. Comments? Uh, Council President. Councilman Ward. For the record, there is only one abatement listed on the sheet, and it's for a grand total of ten dollars and twenty-nine cents. Any other comments? Thank you. Hearing none, roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Brian. Yes. Councilman Kanoya. Yes. Councilman Kiffis. Yes. Councilwoman Sierra. Yes. Councilman Susie. Yes. Councilman Ward. Yes. President Gender. Yes, and 20R43 is approved 7 to 0. 20R44, resolution directing the mayor to create a plan for emergency sick times for all city employees during pandemic. Motion to approve. Motion made by Councilman Kiffis. Second for discussion. Uh, seconded by Councilman Susie. Comments? Council President. Councilman Kiffis. Um, again, after some discussion with uh, constituents, I'd like to make I'd like to propose an amendment to this. Um, at the end of section one um, of the actual resolution, um, add an, an additional sentence. This provision is not to apply to members of the city council or school. Um, I just want to make that. It wasn't intended to. We're not really considered employees, but I just want to make that very clear. So, that's right. so does that mean as, as an amendment? Yeah. Okay, All motion right. to amend. Second. Seconded by Councilman Knoyer. Comments on the amendment? Hearing none, roll call, Madam Clerk, on the amendment. Councilman Brian? Yes. Councilman Knoyer? Yes. Councilman Kiffis? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Councilman Susie? Yes. Councilman Ward? Yes. President Gender? Yes, and 20R44 is, is amended <coughs> 7 to 0. On the main motion as amended, comments? Council President, Council President. Uh, through the chair, did the sponsor, Mr. Kithers, speak to the mayor about this at all? Councilman Kithers. I did email the mayor um, and there was um, intention of a callback and I would not get this. 
Especially, especially in looking at part-time and non-benefited employees, to make sure that that they do have access to sick time, uh, even if it's if it's something to fall back. On. That, the, this is why I I didn't propose to make this as um, like our own design of a sick time program. I want just I mean I'm proposing it so that the mayor creates a plan. They want to give it uh, two weeks of paid sick time. Um, the family, uh, the family's first coronavirus response act already provides 80 hours. And in many cases, our employees already have, you know, two weeks or more of sick time, not, not, <clears throat> not counting vacation time. So you want to add to all of that, correct? Well, only for the use of the coronavirus and for, you know, in, in connection yeah. with the coronavirus and also not, you said many employees. Just want to point that out. You said many, not all. And I've actually heard from employees who don't. So, like, I, I like this is this is the result of, of a community request. Yeah, but it says give all. It says give all the employees. So again, if you have an employee that already has two weeks of sick time and they get the eighty hours from the Family Corona uh, Response Act, and then you want to add to that, that's what this does by giving them an additional two weeks on top of all of that. Is that correct? I just want to be clear. So I had left this open-ended deliberately because I hadn't been able, I hadn't gotten the opportunity to talk to the mayor about this. So I, I left it open-ended to allow the mayor to design the most optimal program, but you're passing the resolution simply to bring this up and put it on for later. Um, okay, but but just, I don't mean to be a nudge here, but it's not open-ended in, in so much as it says, draft a plan to give all city employees, including part-time employees, an emergency allocation of two weeks paid sick time to be used for the COVID-19 virus. And all I'm saying is, I just want to be clear that if the, uh, if we pass this and the mayor followed through with this this uh, resolution, they'd get two weeks from this, they'd get 80 hours from the Families, uh, families First Act, and then it, they'd get whatever other uh, hours they they may already have. I'm not saying everybody in City Hall that works for the city has sick time, but I would suggest to you that the majority, the vast majority do. So it's not open-ended in that regard. This is starting to, starting to add up. So, okay, I think I understand what you're asking for. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from the councilors? Council President. Councilman Ward. Um, having heard that this discussion of questions and answers, uh, I it makes gives me concern that the resolution is as open-ended as it may be, um, because recognizing that the Families First Corona Coronavirus Response Act does provide for 80 hours of um, additional paid sick leave on top of any that a person may already have as a municipal employee, um, no. uh, and and that there is. Uh, an additional 10 weeks of eligibility for specified COVID-19 related issues. I think there is more than sufficient additional beneficial time available to employees through that federal act and to, um, to include something that is open-ended or non-specific uh, to me runs the risk of being a very expensive proposition. Fortunately, it's only a resolution, so 
it's it's truly nothing more than a suggestion, but I don't think it's it's essential to the benefit of the employees based upon what's already available through their collective bargaining agreements, our ordinances, and what is available through the federal act um, related to this matter and COVID-19. So I won't be supporting it because I, I think it's not specific enough. And, and more importantly, it, um, it may add to a burden that, um, that though it may be generous, if it were additional time, may not be qualifying for a reimbursement that might be reimbursable under the emergency relief acts that FEMA is passing through the state of Rhode Island because some of this sick time may end up being a reimbursable expense at 75% uh, for those additional hours. And I don't think anything locally um, established would, would meet the same qualifications as the benefits associated with the federal act. So I won't be supporting it, so it won't put us at risk of that situation. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the council? Okay, Mayor, if you're still there. Hi, yes, thank you. So just to piggyback on uh, what Councilman Ward mentioned, for those of you who are not aware that there is uh, up to 80 hours of sick time that is offered to full-time employees through the Emergency Paid Sick Leave Act. And the administration has uh, tried to accommodate uh, everyone with the variety of situations that they may be facing during this time. From the onset, uh, we have expanded the type of leave that uh, employees are allowed to use. So ordinarily, you can only use sick leave uh, when you're sick or vacation time when directors uh, feel that they can, um, you know, approve the vacation time due to the amount of employees uh, who are available. But what we've done from the beginning is, A, uh, anyone who does not feel comfortable coming into work, uh, they can use any type of leave that they would like, whether it be sick leave, vacation time, comp time. Uh, they can use any of the time that, that they choose. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there have been accommodations made, uh, which allows someone who does have uh, a child or children uh, and they need to stay home because they're doing distance learning, uh, they can if they have a parent who is generally cared for through a health care facility or through an adult daycare, uh, they also can use any of the time that they, they need to and they are being extended that additional 80 hours of, uh, of sick hours. Uh, so there has been a lot that's been put in place, and I think the federal government, uh, the state, and municipalities uh, felt that there were accommodations that did need to happen, and they are there, and they've been made available uh, over the last six weeks or so. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Are there any other comments? Council President. Councilman Kithis. If I may address the mayor. Yes, absolutely. I just wanted to I just wanted to thank the mayor for that information. I'm I'm glad to hear um, uh, what the administration's been doing. Um, I did receive a com concerning email a couple of days ago regarding somebody at City Hall getting uh, testing positive for coronavirus. Uh, and I just felt like, you know, the urgency this is not directly the mayor, obviously just more general. I felt that the urgency of this was, you know, important enough. Um, okay. okay. Any other comments? Hearing none, roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Brand? No. Councilman Kanoya? No. Councilman Kiffis? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? No. Councilman Susie? No. Councilman Ward? I didn't hear him. Councilman Ward? You're I, muted. I'm oh, sorry, I had muted myself. No. <laughs> President Dendron. I'll do a thumbs up and down from now on. No. In 20R, 44 is defeated 6 to 1. 20R, 45, resolution directing police force to refrain from disruption of temporary shelters. 
motion to approve. Motion made by Councilman Kithis. Second for discussion. Second by Councilman Susti. Comments? Uh, Council President. Councilman Kithis. Um, this is pretty straightforward. I don't feel like it's too much of an explanation, but um, for exactly the same reasons as I listed for, for very similar reasons as I listed for 2015, um, I think that, you know, there's, I have heard many concrete um, firsthand experiences of people on the ground, either who are experiencing homelessness or who help people who are experiencing homelessness, that this has been a problem in the past. And I'm submitting this resolution simply to ensure that people's last line of, of basic shelter is not, is, is remains intact um, to allow some semblance of uh, self-quarantine or self-isolation. Okay. Any Council President. Councilman Kroya. Again, <clears throat> through the chair, did Councilman Kivis have a discussion with the Public Safety Director or the Police Department about this um, legislation prior to nope. submitting? Councilman Kivis talked to people on the ground, as I said. Yeah, did you speak to the Public Safety Director or the Police Chief or the Police Department about this? I did not. I spoke to people on the ground, as I just said. Oh, okay, okay. So, <clears throat> just so I'm clear, it says the the ordinance says the Woonsocket City Council directs the mayoral administration and the Woonsocket Police Force to refrain from any and all disruptions of temporary shelters within the city, erected by or for any individual who professes to be experiencing homelessness, or for whom that reasonably appears to be the case, in all cases where such shelter is, a, is of a nature that is nonviolent against the personal safety of any other individual. So if someone, including myself, decides to become homeless and pitch a tent on, let's just say, forgive me, Councilman Susie's front lawn, that's okay? Not with well, no, but that's what it says, Dave. No, I know. Anywhere in the city. So I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm using, I'm being extreme to make the point. Yep, I got it. I won't be supporting this. Thank you. Any other comments? Council President. Councilman Brigham. I, I just am, you know, not going to support legislation that says that we can set up homeless encampment due to due to due to the worldwide pandemic. We're going to, as we tried to do earlier, suspend the laws and allow for homeless encampments. Let's say we pass this, and then suddenly we're going to have. A homeless encampment at Barry Field uh, on the 50-yard line that the police can do nothing about. And I'm not going to support legislation that says, come to Woonsocket. We're the place where the homeless set up camps and the, we don't enforce the laws against them. I mean, we're trying hard enough to change the attitude of the city of, of the people in this state towards the city. And then we're going to pass legislation that says, you know, we'll get bumper stickers that says, Woonsocket, you know, home of, of homeless encampments and lawlessness. Like, I, I just, it just, it, it flabbergasts me. Again, the road to hell is paved with good intention. I, I, I can't support this. I can't. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the council? Council President. Councilman Ward. Um, for the record, as I indicated earlier, I did have a conversation or an email exchange with the public safety director. When I asked specifically how many homes in Camden have been broken up in the last two months, his response to me is that they have not broken up any homeless encampments. I leave it to the judgment and intellect of the police department and its leadership to make decisions that are in the best interest of every citizen of the city in terms of how they are comporting themselves in conjunction with the law. And I think in this certain situation with COVID-19 being the threat that it is, um, to allow people to stay in the place that they are uh, essentially is a self quarantine to a certain extent. And so it would not be prudent for them to break up those encampments. Uh, even though it is temporary and uncomfortable, it is the home that they go to every day, as much as you can call it a home. And it's terrible to think of it that way. Um, but on a connected but only tangentially matter, related to COVID-19 and its impact on society. And I'm not sure how much this relates to homelessness, but the Department 
Department of Health finally issued their demographic statistics. And one of the things that's interesting about the, 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 the people affected by COVID-19, of the 5,090 that have been diagnosed or identified, um, less than 1,000 or, or actually 34% of them are 60 years and older. 34%, that's a third. But when it comes to the deaths associated with it, 92% of the deaths are people over the age of 60. And I say that because, and again, I don't know how many people are in what age demographic for homelessness, except that it appears to me to be showing itself to be the case, as has been noted in many of the speeches up until the time they released these statistics, that most of the deaths are coming at nursing homes for people who are in fragile health or have other conditions. Um, as a matter of fact, for the state of Rhode Island, they list no deaths for anyone under the age of 50, and only 5% of those are from ages 50 to 59. So I think that the police department is doing the prudent thing and to have the encampments be allowed temporarily in the best interests of that part of society in that they are probably in the safest place they can be other than a shelter, which unfortunately in many cases they choose not to partake of. Um, I think the problem is already being taken care of. And if we pass this resolution, it's to do nothing more than say, um, we passed this resolution, but I don't think it has any direct impact on what the police department will do or how they will act in their professional capacity under the, these trying circumstances. So uh, I, if I, I will be voting against it only because of its lack of necessity. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the council? I was going to, um, I was spoken with the mayor about this and I was going to address um, what I had said with her, but she uh, does have a desire to speak. So I will, um, is the mayor still there? Yes, I am. Mayor, I'll just let you um, talk about our discussion regarding the police interaction and I will let you take it in uh, place of me saying it. Okay, thank you. So first I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the public safety officials within the city uh, they have a difficult job, uh, Not, never mind having COVID-19 inserted into their line of duty. And I can say that early on, and Director Gillette can speak to this also if he would like, but early on one of our very first conversations was pertaining to the homeless population and how uh, we can be certain that we're paying attention to their needs and making certain that uh, the public safety officials uh, are available to them if they so need uh, to desire help. Uh, our, our police department uh, is not only not um, requesting that homeless uh, folks disassemble their, their, their quarters, uh, but they are actually going out and doing wellness checks. So they are checking in with the homeless population. Uh, if they happen to know where they are um, staying, they go there, they check on them, and they are not being asked uh, to, to move along, so to speak. So we are, not only are we doing that, but we are in close contact with Harvest Community Church, uh, working with the pastor there uh, to be certain that he has what he needs um, to help the homeless men that are living there, and uh, we are doing that with some other agencies in the city pertaining to uh, the avail availability of um, a food supply. So the homeless population, um, as someone mentioned, some folks do desire uh, assistance and others just do not want assistance, and, and that's a choice that they've made. But we are very, very sensitive uh, to uh, their situation and their surroundings, and I do want to applaud our police department for their efforts with them and our fire department also. Um, you know, as you know, if, if there are uh, homeless people who have, 
are, are positive, if they're tested, if they're positive, having them move from location to location is not beneficial. Uh, so that's just an, a, another um, reasoning, reasoning behind not asking them to move along and, and going into different locations and finding different living quarters uh, over and over again. So again, um, they are being checked on for, for wellness and, um, and they're doing a very good job. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Director Gillette, were you trying to make a comment? Yes, I was. Uh, I could. So, um, this legislation will really hinder us uh, in, in certain situations, you know, as far as you know, unsanitary conditions or, or, or the placement of uh, these locations, like near train tracks, uh, you know, open burning near uh, uh, places where there's a fuel source. So, we, we need to use that to be able to have that tool use the discretion of when we can move these properties. But again, as the mayor said, uh, we're making every effort to, uh, to reach out to these people with our human service uh, director and uh, find them a uh, proper place to live and, and do as much as we can. So uh, I just wanted to add that. And, um, you know, again, uh, if I could just echo what the mayor was saying, uh, the police and the fire department are doing a tremendous job in, in this whole epidemic. And, uh, we're really working hard every day, trying to find new ways of uh, getting some more testing here, uh, conferences every day uh, with the uh, governor's office. So uh, we're doing everything we can, but we, we just, you know, I, I can't remember the last time we had an kid. Uh, Somebody had, had, did you finish up what you were saying? Yeah, I did. I, I, if you heard most of it, uh, yes. I just, if you had any questions, let's close it with that. If you had any questions, I'd be happy to answer. But we, we do use as much discretion we can with these. And the last time we uh, had an encampment uh, vacated, is, I can't remember, uh, maybe two years ago. Uh, and uh, it was might have been on private property, what have you. And so the uh, property owner had... Uh, had to have the um, place that he came yeah. for that particular. But uh, if you have any questions, I'm here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Any other comments from the Mr. Conference? President? Susie. Uncle Susie. Yeah. No, I appreciate hearing from the mayor and from uh, from our public safety director. I think it's important. I think if this brought up anything, it's it's hearing from them and and uh, maybe you know making us all realize that uh, they're doing their what they have to do and doing it well. And I appreciate their their input for sure. And it's going to help me. Uh, and the decision we make, because this is only a resolution, it wouldn't find anybody anyway. And it's nice to hear that they're they're doing, I think, what we, we expect them to do. And uh, I'm very grateful for that. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? I'd just like to close out with this. And Councilman Susi, you made a very good point. Um, but the, the bigger point is that this type of discussion can always be had by making a phone call to the mayor, um, to the director, public safety director, and to put something like this legislation on an agenda um, just to have this grandiose discussion and then ultimately have it find out that the city has already been doing better than what is proposed. This is, this is why um, people get frustrated with city government, state government, and federal government, because you hear this type of baloney and this type of wasted time discussing this when our first responders are doing better than this resolution would have required. And we could simply have avoided having this needless conversation. And you couldn't have had that conversation with the public safety director, the mayor, the police chief, the fire chief, and find out that our homeless population is being respected and is being protected and is being checked on. And if that's really what you want to accomplish, we did nothing tonight to further that accomplishment, but waste time and, and do a, a show for people to say that we're doing something. I want to do effective government, and this legislation or this resolution was was nothing more than feel-good resolution, and I won't be supporting it. And with that, roll call, call Madam Clerk. Cambria? No. Councilman Kanoya? No. Councilman Kippis? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? No. 
Councilman Susi? No. Councilman Ward? No. President Jagger? No, and 20R45 is defeated 6 to 1. 20R46, resolution directing all city departments and employees to practice social distancing while at work and encouraging private employers to do the same. Motion to approve. Motion made by Councilman Kiffis. Do we have a second? 20R46 fails due to a lack of a second. Council President. Council, Councilman Ward. There is no business before I make the motion to a motion made by Councilman Ward. Second. Second. Like yeah. Councilman, uh, Councilwoman Su uh, Sierra and Councilman Kanoya. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we are adjourned at 8 13.